Since being released in the 1990s, the Square One has inspired countless variations, most of them either basic shape mods or changing the number to get more slices on each layer. But there's something that's almost never been done. What if we change the square? How would that work? The square in the Square One's name presumably refers to the shape of the top and bottom layers. So what if we take the exact same rules that define the square one and apply them to other polygons, with everything else being exactly the same? The first rule of the square one is that every side of the polygon has an edge contained within the side and two halves of corners, each of which spans two sides. The second rule is that the corners are exactly twice as wide as edges on the circular surface that the pieces rotate around. With a square, edges take up 30 degrees each and corners take up 60 degrees each. So let's try applying these rules to a hexagon. We can have a hexagon with 20 degree edges and 40 degree corners, but we can go further. With an octagon, we have 15 degree edges and 30 degree corners. It turns out you can replace the square in the square one's name with any other even-sided polygon. So that's exactly what I did. Three years ago, I built a hexagon one. Not the world's first, that honor goes to Chris with him. The hexagon one was extremely interesting to solve. While plenty of square one concepts and algorithms worked on it, many others didn't. It was an incredibly illuminating solve in which I had to learn why the square one has parity and subsequently how to create a parity algorithm for any square one based puzzle. Since then, the logical next step has always been to take the concept a step further and create the octagon one, which was supported by all your comments. So today, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to design the octagon one, 3D print it, put it together, and then explore how it turns and see what it looks like when scrambled. But first, I want to preempt your inevitable question. Can we do the same for odd-sided polygons? The answer is no, simply because there's no equivalent way to split them in half while maintaining rotational symmetry. I have seen the Pentagon one by Twisty Turtle, but its similarity with the square one is purely superficial. The way the Pentagon one turns and scrambles and solves is completely different from the square one based puzzles on a geometric level. That aside, let's get into designing the Octagon one. If you want to keep seeing unique new puzzles from me, like and subscribe. If you want to see 23 other never-before-seen puzzles, check out the Puzzle Advent Calendar playlist in the description. The Octagon 1 is the 15th out of 24 puzzles in this year's daily series. Take a look at the other ones and subscribe to the other awesome puzzle creators. I'm not starting from scratch with the Octagon 1's design. I recently updated my 3D printing setup to have two printers capable of printing puzzle parts in ABS this Chidi Q1 Pro and this enclosed Prusa Mark IV, both of which I did tons of tolerance testing with. Once that was done, I started prototyping a completely new Square One mechanism. The old one that I designed years ago was extremely stable, but couldn't corner cut to save its life. My goal for the new mechanism was to still have it be very stable, but let it corner cut and generally be a more pleasant experience to turn. I could then slice this base mechanism into all sorts of different puzzles, such as the Square 3, or Cursed Square One, or other crazy variations. I really wanted to get it right this time, so to learn more about what makes a good Square One, I watched Cubemaster's very informative video documenting the history of Square One mechanisms. With that knowledge in mind, I designed tons of prototypes to see which one would turn the best. I tested significant mechanism changes, small clearance tweaks, and even optimized the part's print orientations. The culmination of these tests is this square 3, which turns very smoothly and has excellent corner cutting. I'll still tweak the design later, but this iteration is what I'll be adapting for the Octagon 1. Now, if you're extra perceptive, you may have noticed that from a geometric standpoint, the square 3 and Octagon 1 actually have the exact same pieces. On each layer, there's 8 15 degree pieces and 8 30 degree pieces. The difference, aside from the outer shape, is the piece's configuration in the solved state. Due to this, I actually think the octagon one could potentially be significantly more difficult to solve than the square three. I'll come back to this later when I show you how the octagon one turns, but for now, from a design perspective, the pieces being identical gives me confidence that an octagon one at this size will probably turn out just fine. Instinctively, I would have actually made the octagon one larger than this, 
but now I'm interested in seeing the result without scaling anything up. Now that the design's done, it's time to start printing the Octagon 1 parts in ABS on my Chidi Q1 Pro. I was able to fit all of the Square 3 parts into a single print, so I thought I'd do the same for the Octagon 1. Unfortunately, I quickly came across an issue that I hadn't accounted for. One of the centers looked like it wasn't going to make it. I mean, just look at this. So to play it safe, I printed only the outer layer parts and then the unproblematic centerpiece. And now it's time for the difficult centerpiece. You might be thinking, can I just rotate it onto one of the flat faces? Well, yeah, and that's what I did in the end. The reason I was hesitating is, remember I said I tested different part orientations? The orientation for the center that looked like it would fail was actually the one that would have resulted in the best turning puzzle. Printing the center was not an issue previously because none of my prototypes actually had caps. So at some point I need to look into redesigning the cap, but for the time being I'm just printing the center in this other orientation. Now that I finally have all of the Octagon 1's parts printed, it's time to assemble. These square one type puzzles with lots of little pieces are actually surprisingly annoying to put together because once you have them all on, the parts closest to the center slice always end up falling out. So I usually put the biggest pieces next to the center slice, but with the Octagon 1 I really had no choice unless I wanted to assemble it scrambled. So I built the two halves and very carefully pushed them together so that none of the little pieces had any time to fall out. The turning is okay, it's not quite as good as the square 3 because of that center I had to print in a different orientation, but honestly it's nothing to really complain about. Now that the puzzle's assembled, I'm going to finish the faces that I'll be stickering later. I'll be giving them a light sanding with 220 and 2000 grit sandpaper, and then I'm gonna go hard with acetone smoothing the faces. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, so this was my first time smoothing a puzzle with acetone. I didn't sand the face as much because I wanted to see how this would turn out, just as a data point. And yeah, I think the best results would have been achieved if I sanded the puzzle more prior to using the acetone. Maybe even with different grits, since these faces did turn out a bit funky looking. I am glad I tried doing it this way first, since now I can better gauge how to finish puzzles in the future. Anyway, since the Octagon 1 is a 10 colored puzzle, I had to dig deep into my vinyl bin to find more colors to use. I came up with this lighter blue and duller green, and then purple and cyan. Let's sticker this thing up. Well, here we are, the Octagon 1 is done. I'll close out the video by looking at how it turns, and what kind of crazy positions it could get into, and then finally just scrambling it. All of that right after this B-roll. Okay, so let's take a look at how the Octagon 1 turns. The first thing I want to talk about is, I said earlier that I think, despite this puzzle and the Square 3 having the exact same pieces, I think there's actually potential for the Octagon 1 to still be noticeably more difficult. And the reason for that is, I think the Square 3 has a more natural position to get to from a scrambled state. Not a scrambled state with the colors, but specifically with the shape. It's pretty easy to maneuver all these pieces around on the square three using basically just one algorithm, but that algorithm actually doesn't really work on this solved state because of this very specific pattern where all of the edges and corners are perfectly alternating. The algorithm, which I believe I explained in the Minotaur's Maze video, can switch any equivalent amount of pieces. So for example, we have one corner, one edge here, one corner, one edge here. And as long as we have the same on the bottom layer, you can switch these two and these two. But the thing is though, on the Octagon 1, that doesn't help solving the shape. 
Whereas on the square three, because the pieces aren't alternating in the solved state, you can use that algorithm to get the entire shape. So it really depends on whether we can get the octagon one into a common state and then get it back into this shape from that. So on the square one, and even on this, it would be the state where all of the edges are next to each other, which you can get into on the square three, and you can get into on this. So the question is, how hard is it going to be to get from that state into this solved shape? I'm not sure, but for fun, let's put all the edges next to each other now and see how hard that is to do. So of course we have edges there. Does this line up? Yes, that does. Okay, we have more edges next to each other now. Let's see if we can continue with that. Okay, so while it wasn't too hard to get to this state on the octagon one, I also am not sure if there's any trivial way of doing it. And likewise, any trivial way of undoing it and going back into the solved state. Now, of course, I could just rewind the video, but I'm really going to take some time and see if I can figure out a good way of solving this thing. So right now, the last thing left to do is to scramble it. Let's go. Okay, I think this is a pretty fair scramble, so I'm going to take this off camera and on my own time figure out a good way of solving it and then I'll come back with a solving video. But for today, that's all I have to say about this new Octagon 1, which is the 15th puzzle in the 2024 puzzle advent calendar. So if you're still in a mood to see brand new unique puzzles, go check out the rest of them in the playlist. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.